misunderstood. Very difficult concept to teach here, very difficult process to understand. Why should it be misunderstood? I don't know. I think it's pretty clear. I think a lot of the misunderstanding, unfortunately, comes out of the science and the medical community. And we're going to teach you what we believe are some real tried truths and some real facts about this. Thyroid totally misunderstood. That's what this is all about today. Thyroid misconceptions. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about blood tests, the clinical manifestations, what happens in our bodies. How do I make it? How do I convert it? What are the interferences? So a pretty quick one, two, three, four, five approach. Why is it such a problem? There are many individuals, millions of Americans that are supposedly being treated in the world of endocrinology and otherwise um, with thyroid hormones. And unfortunately, they're not always responding. Now, there are certainly can be a lot of factors as to why an individual feels bad, why their energy is low, why they're constipated, uh, why they feel dr they're dragged out all the time. But when you start seeing things like skin problems and dry skin and constipation and their hair's falling out, and um, I, I have not only just my thyroid labs that don't make sense, but I have a lot of physical symptoms that go along with that. And yet in many cases they're being treated and I don't want to say they're being undertreated or mistreated. That wouldn't be fair. I'm not a medical doctor, but I, I'm a naturopath. I'm a clinical nutritionist. I'm a pharmacist. I understand pharmacology. And we see it all the time that many, many individuals are not functioning well from an energy standpoint. Let me back up. Could it be their adrenals? Yes. Could it be influencing? Yes. Could it be that they don't sleep enough? Yes. Could it be that they eat way too many carbs and way too much sugar and way too many processed foods and not enough live foods and energy producing foods? Yes. Could they, it be that they're in an extreme dietary scenario where they skip meals, uh, they eat one meal a day, they're under tremendous stress? Yes, 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 all of that. Yes. That's why when we sit down and we do a consultation, we ask you everything about how you sleep, how you eliminate, yeah, how you go to the bathroom, um, what your energy is like during the day, everything that you eat, what are your chemical exposures, past and present, what is your understanding of nutrition, what is your understanding of how the thyroid works. So we try to bring it all together. So let's just get right to it. Blood tests. Typically, most of the labs that are run are things called TSH and sometimes a T4. We're going to tell you that what has to be run is this, a free T4, a free T3, and a reverse T3, and you should always have, at least initially, thyroid antibodies, antithyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase, TPOs. Why? These work against. Why would I just not use the TSH? Because that's what my endocrinologist said. Well, because th TSH is a feedback mechanism. That's just like the thermostat. That is then assuming that if the TSH is good, everything else is working well. That's not necessarily true. I could have very, very good T4s, but I could have very, very low free T3. As I've taught you in past scenarios, this is the money ball. This is the active thyroid hormone. So blood tests, are they all encompassing? No. They need to be more specific with a reverse, a free T4 and T3, along with thyroid antibodies. Okay, so the blood test scenario, does that cover, does that... Does that constitute and show us everything about an individual and how their thyroid's working? No. Old time physicians going back decades didn't have some of these sophisticated thyroid labs to work with. What did they do? They went by clinical manifestation, such as what? Fatigue, tired, weight gain, hairs falling out, dry skin, constipated, and so on all based on clinical manifestations. Somehow we've gotten away from that and we've gone completely to this where we manage a lab, a number, a value, and not the individual, which I think is hugely problematic. Hugely problematic. Hence why we work with a physician and a nurse practitioner in our office here. Why? Because there are many folks that are falling through the cracks here. This is so totally misunderstood. Okay. Clinical manifestation, the physical manifestations, should they be brought in tandem and matched up with thyroid? Yes, most certainly. Third, what's number three? 
Number three is making it. Making what? Making your thyroid hormone. We have a lot of impairment about how we're making it. We have a lot of interferences. Um, halogenated compounds. We don't have enough iodine in our diet, first of all. We eat too much bread that has bromine, brominated bread. See, these are all called halogens. They're negatively charged. So whether it's bromine, whether it's chlorine, whether it is uh, fluoride, See, these are iodine, see, these are negatively charged uh, components. They're called halogens. And these guys like bromine, chlorine, fluorine, see, they interfere with iodine. If I have a diminished iodine intake, very misunderstood. If I have diminished iodine intake in my diet and my supplement regime, what happens is these guys take precedence. They dominate the landscape. They interfere with thyroid functioning. So why I don't like folks to drink tap water for the chlorine? Why I don't like you to eat breads in general, but everybody's going to have a piece of bread. But brominated breads have bromine in them. And then certainly have a, the fluorine is a whole other issue. There's a lot of chemicals, heavy metals, mercury, lead, mercury in particular, interfere with thyroid function. Um, plastics can interfere. Bisphenol A is an endocrine or a hormone disruptor trying to stay away from as many chemicals through the diet and eating foods that are organic in nature, whole foods, live foods, more fiber in your diet, using a lot of buffered vitamin C to help you detoxify, periodically using a protocol doing detox essentials with some buffered C. How about the use of something called NAC, N-A-C? We use NAC 600 that has selenomethionine, the organically bound form of selenium that helps you to raise glutathione that does what? Helps to raise your detox pathways at a cellular level. So understand that the thyroid is easily disrupted by environmental components, environmental chemicals, metals, lead, mercury, chlorine, fluorine, etc. <laughs> Stress, this is why I try to do these, and we're trying to do these in 15 to 18 minutes, almost impossible. Stress, high cortisol disrupts or down-regulates thyroid receptor activity. So as opposed to this, high cortisol can diminish the thyroid's um, reception to the thyroid hormone. What if I'm estrogen dominant? If you're a female, and many men are because they're overweight, they're obese, and they're converting their testosterone to estrogen. But if I'm estrogen dominant, I can also diminish thyroid conversion. So high cortisol, high stress hormone, estrogen dominance diminishes receptor activity and conversion of T4 to T3, the money ball. One, blood tests. Is that the whole picture? No. It must be combined with understanding how an individual feels. Next, how do I make it? Well, I make it by concentrating iodine, tyrosine, and amino acid, specific nutrients, copper, zinc, selenomethionine, <laughs> um, the, 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 uh, cr critical, zinc, selenomethionine, and copper are critical to thyroid functioning. Iodine and tyrosine are the key players. Without them, you could have all these other minerals in the world. So if I don't have adequate nutrients on board, I can't make it. Now, once I make it, what make what? T4? Now what do I have to do? I have to convert it to the active thyroid component free T3. Once again, high stress interferes with that. Low copper status, low zinc status, high stress hormones, other environmental chemicals. So if you say, what's the... My doctor doesn't want to talk to me about this. So the first thing I'd have you do is go gluten-free for a period of time. I would try to get you on a, as, as much of a whole foods diet as you possibly can. I would try to eat things like seaweed and kelp to get natural sources of iodine. Plenty of fiber, steel cut oats, age your detoxification. Get you on some NAC and buffered vitamin C. In other words, I would try to replete you, maybe even utilize one of our thyroid support preps, thyroid support. It's got a lot of those cofactors that are cri critical and a few gentle herbs, ashwagandha, bacopa. So I I've got to make it. I've got to convert it. 
Does that mean that some folks, sometimes folks don't have to use external thyroid hormones? Absolutely. There could be times that you have to do that. But let's improve <clears throat> how the body makes and converts. Well, I'm under a lot of stress. I can't do anything about that. Well, to a degree, you can. Do you exercise? Do you eat a whole foods diet? Do you eat pastas a lot? Breads a lot? Rice a lot? Corn a lot? If you do, you're going to have difficulty in this area. If I don't sleep well, make human growth hormone well, balance my stress hormone levels well, and I don't use some adrenal adaptogens like adrenal distress and adrenal essentials or uh, adrenal essentials and adrenal essentials plus, I will interfere with this whole conversion process. So the overall message here is you could be being told that your labs are normal, TSH, total T4, doesn't give the whole picture. You need more specifics. I could be feeling horrible. I have all the physical manifestations, yet I'm told that my labs are normal. So let's help you to try to make it better. How I eat, what do I consume, key nutrients to help you make and convert, three and four. And lastly, we've already covered some of them, some of the interferences. And some of the interferences um, that go beyond this scenario that we've talked about here, what about oral um, hormone replacement therapy, synthetic and animal-based hormones, and it can interfere with the conversion process in manufacture and down regulation. Women that are on uh, birth control pills, there's a level of interference there. So know that even certain medications um, can actually interfere and hurt you as well. Thyroid, misunderstood. Ultimately, this is all about how y your energy is being produced. Do I have enough? Can I put check marks? I function well. Joe, so you mean to tell me that it's all about that? No. That's why often when we do some type of thyroid assessment on individuals, we want to know what their female or male hormone status is. We want to also know um, what their diet's like. We want to know what their stress levels are. We want to know how many processed foods they eat, how many live foods do they eat. So not only do we want to know what's happening here, we might even then, hey, have you do a urinary um, adrenal test? Because if you're cranking out a ton of hormones, maybe you have an autoimmune situation. The antibodies will depict that. So this, this is more than just saying, what is your blood? My TSH is low or high. I need or I don't need medication. Okay? Lastly, I'm going to close with this because then I think this is really where many of you, um, so besides the nutrients and some of the elimination that you can do of triggers, et cetera, many of you are on levothyroxine, which we would term T4, and based on whatever dose, and you're given a dose, and supposedly then your TSH normalizes, and you're perceived that you should be normal. Now, what I mean by normal, lab-wise, well, we don't know, right? Because most physicians don't get a free T3, free T4 reverse. Hence, you're perceived to be normal because this checks out. The reality of it is we don't know what this guy is. Remember, that's the money ball. That's the most important one. So often, some of you need combinations. You may need some of this T4, but you also need some T3. Years ago, this was Cytomel. This was very short acting. And the problem with that is it got, mean, it has a short half-life. And it's into your system quickly and it's out quickly and it's processed quickly. And the problem with that is folks often got a, uh, an adverse re reaction. They had pal palpitations, rapid heartbeat, rapid heart rate. I think you need to find a compounding pharmacist, a physician that's open. This, does that mean this is for everybody? No. If, if you're watching this today, um, you probably, you're, 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 you're intuitively, you're understanding there's something not quite right. My energy's down. I don't feel good. I'm told I'm okay. I'm told I'm normal. My skin is dry. I'm constipated. My hair is brittle. My nails break easily. Again, should, do I have to consider other things? How I absorb proteins and minerals? Absolutely. Should I assess adrenals? Absolutely. But clarity would tell me that I need to know more about my thyroid function. Hence, what we do is we sustain release this. 
this T3 so that folks can have longer periods of coverage with the T3. I, I, I really believe this is a key area. If I would have to say that there's two areas that are so grossly misunderstood today um, in the world of healthcare, and it's, they're paid no attention to, are the adrenals. The only time um, medical practitioners will pay any attention to the adrenals is if an individual has a disease state, Cushing's or Addison's, right? Excessive or none at all due to immune, autoimmune attack, there's no adrenal functioning. What happens, I think, it is similar here, is that if your adrenals are perceived to be working, if your thyroid is perceived to be working, then we assume everything's all right. You could be an employer. Everybody that's at work for you, they might be there, but are they really working? You could be a manager of a group of people. You, you, you could, you know, hey, there's some men, they're just kicking it all day. They're into it. They're focused. They're diligent. There's others that are not. Just because these basic labs, that the gland that isn't diseased, doesn't always mean that it's working efficiently maxing your energy supply. Adrenals and thyroid, they tie very, very closely. They interplay on one another. So do your male and female hormones, women more susceptible. But I'm hoping this has helped you. This is a difficult area because there's not one magical nutrient that makes you overcome all of these areas. I still believe there's lifestyle. You've got to cope with stress. I've got to get you exercising. I might get you to go gluten-free. I might want to get you on a group of nutrients. I might want to get you on quality antioxidants to protect the thyroid and the nutrients that help you make and convert. So there's a process that, that, it, that goes here. But ultimately, you might need additional support that goes beyond straight T4. Some of you might be listening and say, wait a minute, I, I got on the Synthroid levothyroxine and I, I feel great. I, Praise God, then you, this discussion is not for you. This is not for everybody. If there's a block of the population that is grossly misunderstood, well, I took the name off, I took the wording off, that is grossly misunderstood, their labs on the surface appear to be relatively normal, they do not feel normal, they have not improved, and they're basically discarded and eventually felt that they feel that they need to go see a psychiatrist because you're okay. There's nothing wrong with your thyroid. The reality of it is there's many folks that are battling this. If you need further help with this, you can go to our website. We have some uh, actual in-print thyroid protocols. You also can call the off-air toll-free number, send us an email, set up a time um, to maybe discuss this specifically so that you become more educated. When you work with your physician, you have more ammunition. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope thyroid misunderstood has become a little more understood for you at this time. God bless. Thanks for being with us.